glad it's just a rumor first question came from my boy kevin b he said hello fam i hope all is well and everybody's in good health good to hear that lamar jackson is willing to stick around now with a 17 game season do you think that it's time to up our roster we're going to need at least 58 to 60 on the roster and a few extra on the practice squad more to come but just had to get this one out peace and blessings to you and your fam and everyone out there stay safe appreciate it kevin so um, as far as the Ravens meeting the minimum requirements for players on the active roster and players on the practice squad, yes, completely agree. I mean, that's something that they have to do regardless. But as far as upping their roster, especially with it being a 17 game season um, and just again, they in the AFC and the AFC is stacked. It is loaded. It is going crazy right now. That's probably why Tom Brady decided to come back. Uh, but anyway, Bashadi. A quote that was very interesting to me from Bashadi. Um, it kind of tied into what you're talking about as far as upping the roster. Uh, Jeff Zrebic, he says, Bashadi, when it came to the six straight losses to end the season, he said, I was good emotionally with it because I kind of didn't think we necessarily even deserved to be eight and three. Now, that part right there, um, let's just finish. He said, I thought we had gotten very fortunate. I didn't have real hopes, real high hopes of a playoff run when you're that depleted. So, um, he is speaking, of course, about the injuries mixed with uh, the Ravens being eight and three. So they were hurt. A lot of guys were out. Um, and he just he didn't feel like this team even deserved to be where they were at. Um, now, it's funny because if we go back, if you look back, I remember plenty of videos where the Ravens were obviously winning. They had a winning record. But I will continuously say, like, it's not good enough. It is not good enough the way that they're winning. People be like, man, you're just complaining, man. The Ravens are winning. You're still complaining, man. I said, no, it's not that. You just got to look at the context. Yes, a winning a win is the most important thing at the end of the day. But if you, you got to look at the way that they're winning and all these late game heroics, they're fun and they're nice. But can you really keep that up an entire season? It's possible, but you want to have more quality wins you want to have more wins of course you want to show and prove to yourself and prove to your team and prove to everybody hey we can win from being down uh we can have a lead and maintain it we can be in a back and forth battle and keep up we can do that but when so many of your games are come from behind come from behind come from behind come from behind what are you doing behind so much <laughs> like <laughs> But this the, the 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 part about eight and three, him saying that I didn't think we necessarily deserved to be eight and three. I thought we had gotten very fortunate. That part screamed to me. Um, he wants more quality wins, uh, quality points, and quality players. Uh, and this is something that we've been echoing on here for a very long time now. Um, and what quality players do, they give, especially on offense, they give you quality points. And they help you get quality wins. Uh, playmakers are essential. They are essential uh, on both sides of the ball. We're not just talking offense. We're talking defense as well. They are essential for you to have success in today's NFL. Um, so I really hope that the Ravens, and it's, it's still early in the offseason, but again, you see what everybody else in the AFC is doing. And I, I keep hearing people say, oh, Ravens culture this and culture that. We built around defense. They need to stick with defense. Why uh, should we copy what everybody else is doing if we are built on the run and we are built on playing good defense? Because this is the NFL where all, it's all about offense, man. It's all about offense. You got to be able to put up points and a lot of them, a lot of them. And I keep saying, some people say, hey, well, look at the Rams and Bengals game. The, the Rams defense, they won that game. They have some playmakers on defense. And they, did they not score any points on offense? Did they not? If they didn't, uh, I'm, I'm clearly mistaken. But you even see that the, the two teams that even made it to the, the Super Bowl, it's often those guys can score points. And they had play. The Bengals have some lockdown defense? No. But they had playmakers on defense. Did the Rams have some lockdown defense? No, but they had playmakers on defense. You don't have to have some shutdown, lockdown, uh, you ain't scoring no points type of defense, but you got to have playmakers. But as far as offense, you got to be able to score that ball. The NFL makes rules, so they help you score. The, the NFL helps offenses move down the field. 
They put in so many rules. Like even, look, some, like even a kickoff rule. Remember when a touchback used to go to the 20? Oh, it seemed like so long ago. Now it comes out to the 25. They give you five more yards. Five more yards. They're like, hey, here, offenses, we want points. Take them. Take them. The rules benefit the offenses so much. Ravens got to take advantage. Team, keep it clean. We got some fire questions to get into on this episode. A question from subs. Let's do it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question you want and we answer it in a video like this. Now, if you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Team Keep It Clean, like I said, we got some great questions as we always do. Let's get a little bit greedy with it. Next question came from my guy, Mark G. He said, can I be a little greedy? What's going on, Engraven? Hope this question isn't too long because it has two parts. First, it's funny you mentioned Bobby Wagner Watch. I'm refreshing my YouTube acting like I'm not waiting for you to drop the next Bobby Wagner move. So my question is, would I be greedy to ask for the Honey Badger as well? Ooh, I, you know, I've been seeing some people say that. Um, I don't, it would be greedy, you know, but you know I'm greedy. You know I'm greedy all day, but I just, oh man. Because if, if they did that, I mean, I know they're not, but if they did that, what would you do with Chuck? Uh, have him around the box more and have Honey Badge and Marcus Williams back there. But I just think about the money part. I, I don't, I mean, it is defense, but at the same time, I, I wouldn't see them investing all that money into two safeties. Um, I just wouldn't see it. Now, we were in the Twitter space yesterday and some people were talking about what if uh, Kyle Hamilton dropped? What if he dropped to 14? What would the Ravens do? Would they take him? Would, they, would you pass up on Kyle Hamilton or would you uh, like trade back or something like that? So that's another scenario to think about. But I just let's just keep on going with the question. He said, I think it would go crazy depending on the package and schemes, but also he would want to be on the field full time and get paid starter money. Uh, besides, I think the Steelers, Saints and Raiders are on it. Now, I wouldn't mind bringing back the Joker, Deshaun Elliott, either. What's more realistic? <laughs> LOL. Um, so definitely bringing back Deshaun Elliott. But what would his role be? That would be such a, a big question. What would Deshaun Elliott's role be? Because Marcus Williams, you ain't paying him to be on the bench. Uh, Chuck Clark, he's going to be a starter. Uh, then you got Brandon Stevens, who you know they love. They love Brandon Stevens, and they showed that. But as far as Deshaun Elliott, like, they could bring him back. You could have him in a couple packages here and there, but he would primarily be a role player. Would he want that? Is he going to possibly get an opportunity from somewhere else to have – uh, an increased role than he would with the Ravens if he came back, possibly. But yeah, if they, I, I think it'll be more realistic if they brought Deshaun Elliott back. Um, and did I say Deshaun Watson a little bit ago? I feel like I said Deshaun Watson, but I meant Deshaun Elliott if I did say it. Anyway, second part of the question. He said, "You're picking a wide receiver in this draft. Would you snag George Pickens, Jizzy Drake London, or, or John Dotson?" <laughs> See, that, that, that Drizzy is catching on now. It's catching on. Uh, or use this approach. Sign a trade for a wide receiver. Who would you seek? And, and draft Jamison Winston from Bama and stash him. Hey, if he's ready, ain't no stash going on in my book. Um, if I had to pick one of those, mm, there's Christian Watson, too. Can't forget about him. Um, but if I had to pick one of these three, I'd probably go Pickens. I, I would probably go Pickens because he's like the, the, the Marcus Peters. On offense, though. Cause he nasty, man. <laughs> that boy is nasty, man. And he got attitude, man. He got that dog, man. And that's what we need more of. And we, especially on offense. Like, we need more of that dog, more of that attitude on offense. Don't, don't stop being so friendly. So, oh, hey, how's it going? No, 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 no. They, they, they need to get more nasty, man. So, I will go with George Pickens out of those. He said, hope this isn't too long, LOL, and I wanted to give you a shout-out because I watched your live stream at, uh, at work, and I heard it while I was cooking, <laughs> and it meant a lot to me. Uh, I was telling my boys and my girl, please keep up your grind. 
And I value your opinion more than ESPN and NFL reporters. Uh, you and the fam stay blessed. Hashtag team keep it clean. Hey, I, I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you for this, man. This was a uh, fun question. I appreciate that. Shout out to Bad Thoughts. Next question came from my guy, David. He said, good morning, Engraven. Hope you all are doing well. I had a bad thought last night and wanted to get your thoughts on them. Do you think Lamar might get the Tim Tebow treatment from the Ravens in the NFL? No. No. He has done a million things more than Tim Tebow even thought of doing in the NFL. So, no, but let's see what you're talking about. He said, they both went against the norm of the NFL quarterback. They both have great legs and really good arms. Tim, Tim Tebow had a really great arm. That Tim Tebow, the same Tim Tebow we watched? I don't know about that one, my friend. Anyway, he said, and they proved every hater wrong about injuries. They both have proved haters wrong about not being able to come back and win. Tebow almost became known as the new comeback kid. I remember all of them in the fourth quarter. because he, he would be so sorry in the first, second, third, and some of the fourth quarter. Then all of a sudden, they come back. Uh, they both are media and fan darlings. They both have, for some reason, been, for lack of a better word, shunned by the NFL for being outspoken and very successful. I don't really think, I don't think Lamar is outspoken. He's pretty quiet about his stuff. Uh, the tall nail gets the hammer kind of thing. I see a future where Lamar is forced to play for a team who has no idea how to use him <laughs> and, <laughs> and be delegated to as a footnote in NFL history rather than the once-in-a-lifetime talent he is. I really hope I'm wrong, but as you say, anything is possible until it isn't possible anymore. Thank you for taking the time and apologies for the book. God bless you and your family and the Ravens. Appreciate that, David. No, I don't think, I think Lamar will get the furthest thing from uh, Tim T Tebow treatment. Tim Tebow was passed around. He was a Bronco and he was a Jet. Um, and he just kind of like fizzled out. Did he go to the, he, I feel like he went somewhere else too, but he, he kind of fizzled out and nobody really took him seriously like that. Um, Lamar... He like, no, there's no way that he gets passed around like that. And Tim Tebow was never in talks with anybody um, as far as being paid a, a bunch of money, <laughs> being possibly becoming the highest paid quarterback uh, in the future or one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the future. Tebow was never in that talk. So that right there alone and even before the, the contract talk, before well, everything that Lamar has done. Tebow, like, no. So he, he ain't got to worry about Lamar getting no Tebow treatment. Next question came from a guy, Sergio. He said, I ain't This is my first time asking a question and would love your feedback. With all the moves that have happened in the offseason, sure feels like the news about Greg Roman staying as OC slapped us harder than... <laughs> this guy, man. Said it slapped us harder than Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. It's no secret the Ravens don't know how to properly use the players they have. That's especially true about our Greg Roman-led offense. We all know guys like Bateman, Prochet, and Duvernay are underutilized. I like for you and all the team keep it clean to share some scenarios that you think could possibly play out with our offensive coordinator situation. Will Giro get the boot midseason? I think we'd all like to see a creative offensive coordinator at the helm of this talented offense, whether it's an in-house guy or an outside hire. The homie Malik and I have been watching you for a while now. We love the quality and consistency of your content. Maybe one day you'll be interviewing players themselves. Many blessings. Serge. Appreciate that, Serge. Woo! Um, with Giro. Um... I, I do think that this is his last year. Um, that's whether the Ravens finish out the season with him or even if they don't. Uh, and I'm not here to go on some Giro tirade or rant or anything like that. But I just think with the hires that they've made over the past year and change, it spells the end for Giro. Again, we, we talked about this a lot uh, as far as them bringing in a T. Martin and Keith Williams. They brought in coaches that they are good at what Giro was bad at. If you were a good offensive coordinator and your team felt like you were a good offensive coordinator, why would they bring in guys to help you where you're weak? You shouldn't really have big areas of weaknesses like that. Even if you, do, you don't do something the best, even if something is maybe not your strongest uh, characteristic, they brought in guys to help you. Um, so I just, I think it already spells the beginning of the end for Greg Roman. And then with them hiring, um, Kerry Dixon from Georgia Tech, uh, as an assistant QB coach. I also think that, and somebody brought it up in the comment section. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, that could probably also put James Urban on notice because they may, I think the Ravens, I, ho I hope the Ravens, I can't say I think, but I hope that this really indicates that the Ravens. They feel like they have not gotten the most out of Lamar Jackson, and they really want to get the, the most and really want to have him just be the best quarterback that he can possibly be. I do feel like Greg Roman 
has done, he was a good introductory offensive coordinator for Lamar Jackson. But it, I feel like it's really time for this Ravens team to take a, a huge step forward with the offense, with Lamar, with the passing game. It's time for them to take a, a huge step forward um, because it will take them such a long way. It will take the offense such a long way. It will take the team such a long way if they can take a huge step forward. Now, last year, they started to show it. They started to. Let's see if it continues, though. Next question came from the Marksman. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just want to say thank you so much for the incredible videos. You make my day. And every time when news comes out, that can make other fans cry. <laughs> he said that can make other fans cry themselves to sleep. You still got that nice smile on your face when you, when you announce it. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> Ooh. I wonder if uh, Bobby Wagner news will come out by the time y'all see this video. We'll see, though. Anyways, to the question, should the Ravens sign J.C. Treader? I don't think the Ravens are going to sign J.C. Treader. It'd be nice if they did, but I don't think they will. I think Patrick McCarry is their dude. Right, anyway, he said, I know that people are starting to say that Patrick McCarry might be the new Ravens center, but then who will replace McCarry at guard? Well, you got Tyree Phillips. You got Ben Cleveland. Um, so you got options. Eh? And then if they, ev say, for instance, they even drafted a left tackle. What if they drafted a left tackle as a just-in-case guy for Ronnie Stanley? And Ronnie Stanley's like, oh, hey, guys, I'm okay. I'm ready. And then they could possibly move that left tackle to guard. So they, they got options. Um, and he said, uh, so either way, we need a powerful offensive line. So why not sign J.C. Treader for center and keep McCarry where he is? Let me know what you think. Um, where is McCarry, though? He, he's a backup. So he, that's where he was. And it, he'd be a nice depth guy because he's somebody that you could plug and play wherever on the offensive line. Um, but, again, like we mentioned earlier, I think the money talks and the money says, like, McCary is going to be the guy. I also do think it was a little bit of smoke screen in there. I think they're going to uh, – they're trying to sort of throw people off as far as draft as well um, because they – you know they're going to be looking at offensive linemen um, for all – Five positions on the offensive line, especially left tackle and probably center. Somebody to compete with Patrick McCarry and Tristan Colon Castillo. Um, but I think that if the board doesn't fall how they want it to, I think they would be just fine uh, with Patrick McCarry being their starting center. I, I just I don't see a world where they sign uh, J.C. Treader. Is this the year? So next question came from Cynthia. She said, isn't this the year we finally find out where the money issue with Earl Thomas is addressed? Does he still have money on the table that the Ravens have to pay him? Uh, does the money affect the cap space? It's been so long since his issue was addressed besides his release. Please explain how the Ravens can come out of this with their head above water. Thank you for keeping it clean. Appreciate you, Cynthia. Earl Thomas, um, the only way that the Ravens pay him any more money is if they lose the grievance. If they win the grievance, nothing happens because they've already uh, they've already removed the um, I think it was like a ten mil or something that was on the cap. Earl Thomas is not on the cap anymore. But if the Ravens lose, then they would have to that he would account for like ten mil on the salary cap. So that that's what we're waiting on right now, or still waiting. It's been what has it been. Two years, something like that. But yeah, that, that, that's the hold up, right? Well, not even the hold up, but that's what it is. So Earl Thomas is not taking up any cap space, anything like that. Uh, but like I said, if the Ravens lose the grievance, they got to pay him 10 mil more, I believe. And if they win, then nothing happens. They don't gain any cap space and they don't lose any cap space if they win. Next question came from my guy, Alex. He said, what's going on, my guy? How you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you. He said, well, I myself am feeling like a big dummy after watching your question from subscriber video earlier today and listening to you respond to my question about Tyus Bowser. Uh, I pride myself. Oh, well, his question was, um, can we see the, the, the maximum potential of Tyus Bowser uh, with the Ravens? Um, and my response to that was, well, maybe we'll see what Mike McDonald, but we'll see what Tyus Bowser's role is. Um, it depends on how he comes back from his injury. Uh, but anyway, he said that uh, I pride myself on being a Ravens super fan and I have been I have been literally since we came on the scene in 96 when I was nine years old. I don't usually miss a beat when it comes to anything regarding my team. But after your response to my question yesterday, my pride as a Ravens fan took a hit. Uh, I literally don't even know how I, I didn't need, don't even know Tyus got hurt until after watching your video. And that hurt my feelings as a fan, because how am I going to not know one of my favorite players on the team was injured in the last game of the season against our arch rivals? Uh, that just sounds like some fair weather fan stuff. And I'm definitely not that I, I, I wouldn't down yourself like that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. You just missed it. 
Yeah, that's it. You missed it. That's it. So I don't think we got to, you ain't got to overthink it or be overly critical of yourself. Just missed it. We all forget, like, trust me, I, I forget a lot of stuff. A whole lot. So you forgetting that Tyus Bowser had an injury, it's, it, you ain't got to beat yourself, up, beat yourself up over that. He said, it just bothered me that something so significantly total, so, so significant was totally missed by me. Uh, in my defense, I was just returning from vacation the day of that Pittsburgh game, and I was only able to catch bits and pieces of it here and there. Obviously, one of the parts I missed was the injury, but I'm confused to how I didn't hear about it some other way after the season was over. That's the mind-boggling part. Uh, had I known he got injured, my question to you regarding him yesterday would have been a completely different one. And had he not got injured, we would have been having a totally different conversation regarding him doing that video. But regardless, we are where we are now as far as his status. My question for you is, which player or players on the current roster are likely candidates that can replace him for the start of the season while he's out? Um, Dalen Hayes. And that's it. Not Jalen Ferguson. They play completely different. Jalen Ferguson is more of a defensive end. Tyus Bowser more of an outside linebacker who can put his hands in the dirt, but he can also drop back. Jalen Ferguson not dropping back right now. So Dalen Hayes. And that's it. Just Dalen Hayes. Uh, do you think that do you think this will be Jalen Ferguson's time to shine and finally show us what he's made of uh, so he can secure a spot on the roster in the future? I think this does help him, possibly. But I don't think his roster spot is safe. Uh, or if there's somebody else on the team that comes to your mind that would be a better, a better suitor for Bowser's replacement. Or this is potential replacement, not even on the current roster yet. Hint, hint, the NFL draft is almost here. Yeah, I think the Ravens are certainly um, going to be looking at the draft, too, uh, for, for guys, for depth guys as far as outside linebackers and whatnot. Oh, Malik Harrison. Malik Harrison. That's another one, too. Can't believe I forgot about him. Malik Harrison is another one. So I would say um, Dalen Hayes. And Malik Harrison for sure. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Olu. And appreciate you being a patron. He said, have you seen the work Lamar Jackson has been putting in to go with the new QB coach? We grab a wide receiver Pickens from Georgia or Ross from Clemson. We're cooking the fourth round. What do you think? Wide open offense. They, again, with that hire, if that hire is going to implement his say-so and implement uh, his history and what he's done recently, then that will point to the Ravens going more spread offense. Really spreading them out. Really going to a uh, sort of pick your poison type of offense. And if you can do that with quality guys, not just quantity, but quality guys, like imagine that. Imagine a Bateman, Hollywood, Andrews, and a Pickens. So he did mention Justin Ross too, or Christian Watson or so, whoever. And you still got James Prochet and Devin Duvernay as well. But just imagine that. And Tyler Wallace, too. But just imagine that. Like, pick your poison. And I, if the Ravens did that, that would be a beautiful thing. Because with a pick your poison offense, it does not eliminate the run game. <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't. Oh, man. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> First three rounds of receiving it. A receiver is happening for sure, y'all. I. Don't say I ain't try to warn you. We we one month away from the draft, man. One month, less than a month away, as a matter of fact. But don't say I didn't warn you. It's coming.